Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. I'm with Dr. Nagaswamy. Today we're going to take a look at the Bangkok temples, especially the one that was built for Brahma. And uh, Dr. Nagaswamy, welcome to P Guru's channel. Uh, sir, when did you go to Bangkok? When were these pictures taken? Viewers, you'll see the pictures in the background. Yeah, I had been to Bangkok in 2001. 2001. Mm. And then again uh, later. Mm. Then it's you see, Bangkok is the capital of Thailand now. Originally, <coughs> it was not the capital. Mm. There is one place uh, in Thailand which is called Patam uh, Patam. Mm. It is the first Patna, mm. the first city. According to the local source, when Achauka is in the embassy, the ambassador first landed there, and so that became the first uh, city. Then it was also called near where it was Dwaraka. Mm. After Dwaraka, they had another capital. Ayutthi. Mm. Ayutthi is Ayodhya. Mm. Ayodhya was uh, for more than 500 years the capital of uh, Ayodhya Thailand, which is what they call Sarnabhumi. Sarnabhumi. Right. <laughs> so, when it became Ayodhya, the rulers of Thailand were called Ramas. So from that time onwards, uh, till day, uh, the rulers of, uh, it is a monarchy, they are called Ramas, Rama 1, Rama 2, Rama 3, and so on. Now in the 18th century, uh, when they wanted to build a new capital, for various reasons, the king sent According to the book, architects and engineers to the world Ayodhya mm. and drew up the plan of the streets and the distribution of the palace and the temples and so on. The same thing we uh, built in the new capital and the present Bangkok is laid out according to that world. The Ayodhya is still there. There are many monumental people there. So uh, this began in the 18th century to capture the present population. And in the center of it, you have two temples side by side. One is the Amin temple. Another one is a Buddhist temple. Buddhist is what they call it, sleeping Buddha. But it is Buddha, and it is Rana. It's a wonderful thing. But this, uh, I went to Kuba, I went to Kuba, three shrines side by side within an enclosure. It is almost the center of my form. And in front, it's a huge yard and it is a procession and so on and at the other end you have 60 feet of a swing, you know, where uh, in ancient times uh, men used to climb up and get into the swing and they used to swing I see. the swing festival which is uh, very greatly celebrated. But, uh, Somewhere in the beginning of the 19th century, 
and you teach them. You bring them back to the friend of them. You stop the festival. But the pillars are still there. The center part of it. They are called the Asian friend of them. Now, here we have a tradition of Brahmins. Now, Thailand uh, is a Buddhist country. And uh, after the 14th century, it was the Theravada Buddhism of uh, Sri Lanka. Then uh, I think the Mahayana, Buddha, like the figures around the country. And in that, we have some Brahmins or sectors come from South India to Thailand. And there are two traditions. One, they say that they came from Chidambaram region, the place of Lord Nathalaya, even to Thailand. The other tradition says they went from Rameshwaram region to Bangkok. Now, most likely when they went from the Amishan region, some of the literature seems to be from there. Now, these Brahmins have a uh, Diksha Lama, Vamadeva, Tat Purusha, Agora, Sekhura, they are called Vamadeva Muni, the present Brahma. These Brahmins as the Rajaguru, they became Rajagurus. And probably they didn't go straight from India, they went from Arameshwaram to Cambodia. And in the 14th century, there is a tradition that the Thai king appreciated the efficiency of the Brahmanas in maintaining account and administration. And so they invited them to come from Cambodia to Thailand. And some people have come to Thailand. So the movement has been from here to Cambodia and Cambodia to Thailand. And they brought extraordinary system from South India to Thailand. It consisted of Vedic chants, Vatu Puja, Granada Puja. These are all in Sanskrit and Vedic Also, Hanuman. Hanuman, when they established Ayodhya, it was the influence of Ramayana that made them to call it Ayodhya. So, Hanuman. And then they definitely came from South India, it's clear from the fact that they brought Tevaram songs, Tevaram or the Saiva poems written by Saiva saints. After someone left, Shukla left, and Manikya was in that. And interestingly, the first ten songs, each is called Kajigam. One Kajigam consists of ten poems, ten verses. So, the first ten verses sung by Nyavasamandha, beginning with Toru Deyas and Niyam, that song was the answer. And Putra in a war, we like the idea, we is another by upper That is the first ten verses of Rappa. And the third, Sundaram Murti, Pitta is so the first three saints um, uh, are represented by the first Pradigam, all the ten verses, they have gone from here. 
and also Maharishi they have brought all these Tamil verses also there. So you have Vedic Sam, Vastu Puja, then you have Anumat Kavachan, and then the Tevaram Sam, and also there are some folk songs on Shiva, not sung by this song, but uh, local art from the Indian and Afghanistan. They are in Tamil. So Vedic, Sanskrit, and Tamil poems are there. They have brought it. And they are written in Khmer, Khmer script and uh, Thai script. Right. So they have written all these, including the Tamil verses, in that Khmer school. A number of books are there. And what is important is the month Margasirsha. Margasirsha in Sanskrit. Tiruvadire is and the star of Lord Shiva, Nataraja. You know, they were steep in the cyber system. Probably they also brought some Nataraja images. You will be seeing that mm -hmm. in the Hindu temple, Nataraja, from Tamil Nadu, still under worship there. They have kept it there. And um, Mailapur, Somehow have attracted them. And in Mailapur Pradigam, Yanasamanda sings in each verse a festival belonging to that particular month. Twelve months, twelve stars, and twelve festivals. He sings in Mailapur. These are all Pavai Pati. Adirinar Kanade Pujiyo Pumbavai Pumbavai Pante Masik Kadalad Kanade Pujiyo Pumbavai I mean, he sings that. So they also got this one written there, that Mailapur Padiyam also is there in addition to it. These verses of Adar and Say by saying, some of these they end as Pade Lur in Bhavad. Everything ends with in Bhavad, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. Pade Lur in Bhavad. But they didn't know what these are signs. Only these have been recorded in the 18th century. Right. But uh, till very recently they didn't know what it is. Now only because of contract they know. So they used to call it Lur in Bhavad. This is called Lower Imbava in their language. The whole month of Maharadi, they sung, they sing even today. Mm -hmm. they, 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 as a festival, ritual during this month, only just two days back, you now we are coming to Chitra. So, that Lower Imbava, I used to say, Lower Imbava, that song they sing for 30 days daily. Mm -hmm. And the Maharaji festival was very famous when the king himself used to come for one night he used to worship. So this is a royal temple, mm -hmm. back, back of Brahmin temple. That adjacent to the great uh, Nirvana of Buddha. There. there you have worship of Brahma and uh, Vishnu and Shiva. Uh, here in, Tamil, in India, we don't give so much importance to Brahma as an image, an image worship. There, Brahma, the author of Vedas, is adored. And golden images are still there under worship because it is being worshipped by the king. And um, they have got the books written in Khmer script, Khmer and Thai script. 
and that they are in the custody of the Raj Guru, who is now the present one is called Bhava Deva Muni. And there are a number of Brahmins who are related to them. They are all uh, Vedic scholars, they study Vedic. But Buddhist Vedic, mm. Buddhist Brahmanas. So there is a special category of uh, Buddhist Brahmana. They know Sanskrit, Veda. And now they are learning also Tamil, uh, some of them are sent here to study Veda. So there is one thing about this temple. Vishnu, and the central person of his time, the Vamadeva Now, there is a big Ganesha, very big Ganesha. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, Linga, Shiva Linga, big Shiva Linga. And then, we have Rama as in one one shrine. Because Ramayana, uh, the great, uh, tradition that in Thailand, the palace where uh, the king lives, it has all over the complete uh, walls painted with the Ramayana stories in golden color, beginning to end. So, Rama and also particularly Hanuma are greatly venerated in that. And the whole of Indian iconography, they are all drawn and kept in the treasuries and they study it and with all, all of them have labels written in Thai script, what it represents. They don't call Rama as Rama as we say, they always say Sri Rama. So we have um, uh, Golden Brahma, Sri Vajva and uh, Brahma and also Ram. Uh, under worship there, and they read that. I'll show you the next one. See, this is the manuscript. Mm. The manuscript is at, on cloth, mm. covered with uh, black, uh, what you call it, uh, carbon uh, color, mm. black color, and written with white paint inside. It's only the cover, inside you have a number of things. You can spread it like that, mm. one, one cloth complete, it's folded, and in each one you get all this Vedic chant, Vastu Sastra, and then this, um, uh, what you call that, Grihat, Nava Grihat, and then you have Hanumat Kavacha, and then this Tevaram and Tiruvajam with this. This is generally People are not allowed to, it is only handled by the uh, priest. When there is coronation, some of these verses are also sung during the coronation of the king. So, there you are. It's a permanent appearance. Yeah, yeah, I'll probably. I, I'll not use this. I just use the salient one. Here, this is the one. Here, in, in this. This is the temple interior. Mm. Central one, the big one is in Thai art, mm. Shiva. And you can see on either side you have got Nataraja. Mm. You can see two Natarajas at the back. Right. And Shivagami is also there. Mm. And you can see in the front you have got the Brahma. Mm. And then you have like Dwarapada, you have Nandi. two uh, attendants. Mm. And this is there. Oh, this is Saraswati, right? Brahma and Saraswati. It's because I see the Veena. Oh, is it Narada? Narada. This one, this one, this one. I'm not able to see that. Well, it's, he, he, I'll describe it. It looks like a Veena and it looks like a lady. It is a lady, so it must be Saraswati. Mm. I'm sorry, I'm unable to tell you. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. That's fine. Now, this is. Uh, uh, manuscript right. and uh, there in the other one is uh, Akshamana. Right. Uh, so, of Purna, right. Correct, correct, correct. So, wh why two Brahmas here and why two Natarajas? Somebody has looked at our one king, uh, two kings, two kings. I see. And I we see. have also in our temples more mm. than one. Mm. So, we may just 